Hello everyone, my lecture today will focus on children and the effects of TV commercials toward them. So with TV, children are exposed to commercial advertisements whose general purpose is to make a positive impression on viewers about a commodity or service in order to drive the sales of that commodity or service. So let's take a look into the characteristics of TV advertisements, which add up to the high recall on the part of the children. So these are voiced and moving images, the setup and characters, and they're being short and recurrent. So all these factors contribute to getting the attention of the children to compel themselves to let their parents buy the products that target them and those that concern family consumption in general. Okay, so we're aware of the fact that children, especially young children, are very vulnerable to clever advertising. So most often than not, they are very gullible. They easily believe what they see on TV. So if we compare this to a particular communication theory, we would think of the silver bullet theory or the hypodermic needle theory, with which the TV commercials have this particular impact, strong impact when it comes to children's purchasing behaviors. So the hypodermic needle theory or the silver bullet theory, whichever applies, are theories in communication which focus on the impact of the media in influencing passive audience. So in our case, TV is the media, the standalone media here, which has a very strong influence in terms of influencing the children's purchasing capacity. So it sees children as a strong target group of consumers that should be listened to, informed, and of course, absolutely persuaded. Now, why do we need to scrutinize the characteristics of TV commercials that children prefer to watch? Basically because television is not that much screened, especially if we use it for babysitting in certain situations so the ads that appear on television especially on free tv for instance would all be accessible on the part of the young kids therefore it affects or it has a very profound impact on the psychosocial development of the children whether directly or indirectly so as we all know um and as we all observe as well, not only do these affect the preference of the children, but also their behavior, their attitudes, right? So if we observe them, we also hear some certain expressions from them, which originally they hear from the ads that they watch, aside from the programs, of course. And their language development is also somewhat affected here and overall so all these factors affect the way of thinking of these young children now one study which is notable is by Kilikon in 2016 which looks into the expression the message the character and the sector related details of the commercials watched by children according to their age and gender so what were the findings of this particular study? Uh, one would be the features of television commercials favored by children aged 3 to 6 years can have different characteristics according to the children's age and gender. So specifically, what are these? It says that children, especially girls, like commercials with direct expressions, whereas boys prefer the ones with indirect expressions okay, what else girls focus more on products in commercials and boys focus more on brand 
names. So one classic example that I could associate here would be Lego, right? So for boys or boys and girls in general, they would associate the blocks, the toy blocks with that of the brand name Lego. So even if the toy is not Lego itself, they would always call it as Lego. Okay, what else? As children age, the brand name of a product becomes more important, which of course becomes evident because they would recall the specific names of the ads that they watch to, for example, in Nickelodeon. There are many advertisements of toys in that particular channel. What else? And lastly, commercials with informative messages were not favored by either girls or boys. Okay? So, in other words, they prefer entertainment over information. That's why it's important for us future media practitioners to consider all these findings of this particular study because with these we would uh, be able to detect or identify which particular advertisement techniques would be applicable in specific cases especially when we talk about audiences with very young age such as three to six years old okay so the overall impact of this study is not only targeting future advertisers like you, like us, okay, but it also looks into the roles of the parents, the educators, the advertising researchers, or the researchers in general, and take a look into the characteristics of these commercials which are favored by children and how these affect their preference as consumers. Why? Because basically commercials activate various impulses in human nature. So it was mentioned in the study that possessiveness and appeal to music play a big factor in motivating or igniting the curiosity on the part of the children consumers okay? and eventually would affect how their parents would purchase some goods in the market okay and some things which were highlighted as well in that particular study was the use of cartoons or animated object which i believe is relatable on our end because as we are familiar with the history of advertising always the case using the animated characters have has been a very effective marketing strategy if not the most effective marketing strategy when it comes to getting the attention and of course the retention of uh, children when it comes to identifying with our brands okay what else tv cartoon and animated characters affected the consumer behaviors of children by making them want to buy or have their parents buy the products promoted by the characters in commercials why again because they are basically entertained with the animation with the graphics and of course the colors the friendliness image of these particular um, cartoons or animated objects and then of course based on that it would follow that they will they would want to buy these particular products what else another technique would be employing famous people so this creates a sense of admiration in children consumers according to Ocell. okay so it affects children's consumption behavior according to temel and yegel in 2005 and eventually it affects their later purchasing behavior according to calvert and then hamid et al in 2014. okay so upon looking at the images here being projected on your screens I would say that a lot of kids would know 
Sara Geronimo in the Philippines. Why? Because she has this wholesome image. And then, of course, when she was picked as an endorser of Jollibee, which is also a brand with which children would easily relate to, it has heightened her popularity when it comes to children. So I know a lot of children who idolizes Sarah G. And of course, the other um, endorsers as well. So we have here Zia Dantes and then the Kramer family. And of course, Anne Curtis. What else? In talks about employing famous people, we also consider the children endorsers, uh, such as the images being projected here. Okay, so it's accordingly another factor that makes commercial enjoyable to children because basically they are easy to relate with on the part of the young audience. Okay, they associate themselves with the endorsers, especially if they have the same age gap age group rather with those of the models or the endorsers and eventually again it would affect and it would influence their purchasing powers so what basically are the takeaways from all these discussions about children and tv commercials so since children are part of the embedded consumers Media practitioners are expected to be more responsible and, of course, more accountable. So, in as much as we would want to find the most effective and the most efficient advertising technique that would cater to the needs of the students, we would also have more responsibility and more accountability. Uh, um, on the outputs or on the effects of these ads towards the children in general. Why? Again, because advertisements, whether we admit or not, would always have a profound impact on the social and the psychosocial development of children, especially if they are exposed to watching all these advertisements every day so especially during this pandemic for instance when all of us or almost all of us are confined in our homes then yes every day we get exposed to these what else media plays a crucial role in forming the mindset of the children who are very vulnerable to what media feeds to them so if you would become a media practitioner later on or advertising practitioner later it's your responsibility to look or to emphasize on which would be the best for these children audience that we have. Okay? It's your responsibility to highlight the things that would contribute to their positive well-being or to make it appear that things would be good for them, which indeed is not really the case so take for instance the image that is being shown here in our screen okay so advertising plays a crucial role on whether or not the children would pick a burger from the fast food or they would opt to choosing the green apple for snack for instance okay so all these talks about tv and children would uh, emphasize the immediacy and the future consumption preference of children when it comes when they are faced with choices in their everyday lives okay what else the bottom line here is we as future media practitioners are formed okay as such okay, we are empowered to have a shared responsibility on the part of the young audience okay? because these children form identity and association with the things that they are exposed to so if we feed them something which is negative then they would believe it to be positive okay so we have to be always careful when it comes to using specific advertising techniques in such a way that they would not confuse it with 
things that are good for them. For instance, do not use these techniques with products such as alcoholic beverages, okay? cigarettes, okay? those with sexual innuendos or double entendre. Okay? We have to be responsible okay? because some ads are confusing. Their approach is, for instance, animation. Okay? But again, the children do not know which one is for them and which one is not really for them. Okay? And of course, it all boils down to producing quality and meaningful content on the part of the advertisers. Okay? So that would be all. I hope you learned a lot from our discussion in this particular video. Thank you very much.